here's a polynomial function that we would like to solve or find the roots and we're going to use the rational zero test so I'm looking at the factors of the leading coefficient the factors of the constant and then looking at all of the variations of the factors on the right over the factors on the left so I've got plus or minus one plus or minus one-fifth plus or minus two two over five and there are all the factors uh, that are possible or all of the roots that are possible so we start testing these I'll just go from left to right I'll try f of one and that'll be five minus nine plus 28 plus 26 which is clearly a non-zero value that is positive f of negative one that's clearly a non-zero value that is negative so right here just reflecting back to our use of the intermediate value theorem in the past we can see that going from positive to negative there has to be a zero on the interval between one and negative one that could be useful so let's go on to look at f of one-fifth see how that's going to be one-fifth it's going to be five over one twenty-five minus nine over twenty-five plus twenty-eight over twenty-five and plus six so a quick question would be does it look like all of the positive values are going to balance out with with all of the with the negative values and the only negative value I have is this little uh, negative nine twenty-fifths here so this is obviously going to be non-zero and positive what does that tell us about our intermediate value theorem at this point? I've got a positive value at one-fifth, I've got a positive value at one, and then a negative value at negative one. So, all, so this narrowed it down, let's continue this, it might be interesting to look at, is that now with, uh, with all of these, so I will go in here and include this other value here now with all of these just stop and consider a moment can you tell what the interval is where there will be an x-intercept okay so that'll be between negative one and one-fifth because negative one uh, f of negative one is a negative value f of one-fifth is a positive value so there has to be a zero somewhere in there let's go on to try f of negative one-fifth. All right, so I'm going to have a negative five over 125. And I'll still have minus nine over 25. And then I'm going to have a minus 28 over five. I did that incorrectly up above. You may have seen already. So let's go ahead and just fix that so this should have been a 5 which wouldn't change our analysis at all and then continuing with f of negative one-fifth I'm going to go plus 6 now let's look at that I've got these uh, this positive value 6 and then will these balance it out so I've got that value that value and that value could that all add up to six in, in which case it would be I mean negative six yeah that looks like that could be a possibility so here are all the uh, negative values uh, with the common denominator of 125 and this actually does uh, come out to zero so we found a root so we're going to carry that root forward. 
So we've got this f of negative 1 fifth is equal to 0. Now that means that we know that x x plus 1 fifth is a factor of this polynomial. And that, and I'm trying to do 1 fifth here, and that fact that negative 1 fifth means x plus 1 fifth is a factor, let's just comment on that. That is using the linear factor theorem. So if negative 1 fifth is a root, as we know, if negative 1 fifth is a root, then x minus negative 1 fifth is a factor. So there's just a little terminology we want to be familiar with. And of course, we know now that we can find the other factors by division. So I'm going to set up the synthetic division here. And then we will carry that out. And we know at this point, and you should also know at this point, that if I'm dividing f of x cubed, or if I'm dividing f of x equals 5x cubed, so if I've got 5x cubed and I'm dividing by x, I'm going to depress this to x squared. So I know that the new factor is going to be x squared. And that is helpful to us because we can always solve x squared, if not by factoring, than by the quadratic formula. So let's do this uh, division. Negative 1 fifth times 5 is negative 1. And I'll add negative 9 plus negative 1 to get negative 10. Negative 1 fifth times negative 10 is 2. And I will add 28 plus 2 to get 30. And negative 1 fifth times 3 is negative 6. And there's our uh, remainder of 0 as expected. So this factor is 5x squared minus 10x plus 30. And let's carry that forward. So to finish solving this, we are going to want to factor the second factor. Now we see there's a, a 5 I'm going to factor out from this right here. So here we've got this all factored out, including I factored the 5 from the 5x squared minus 10x plus 30. And that leaves us with this uh, factor where we can find the additional roots. Now looking at that, we can see that we're not going to be able to factor it. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to say that I've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And that simplifies to this which simplifies to this. Maybe I didn't need to rush through that, but yeah, there's going to be a 4, a 2 rad 5. Now that 2, there's going to be a 2 that cancels there. I want to be careful about rushing through that. So this 2 is going to cancel, right? Because I'm going to have uh, rad 4 times rad 5, which is 2 rad 5, and then that will cancel with this 2. Okay, so those, are the, uh, so those are the roots. Now, let's finish. So the answer to the question might be, depending on how it's phrased, this might be the answer to the question, a solution set. And these are my solutions. So let's talk about that, uh, talk about this solution just for a moment. Given the instructions, given f of x, find the roots with f of x equal to, uh, to this. And I went to the factored form. 
Uh, so that wasn't what was originally given, but we were able to factor to that and then continue from there and, and solve and find these roots. So a few things about this. Uh, one is that what if you were given these, uh, if you were given these and we said find f of x. So that's another wording that could be used. It could be uh, given given roots, and then you would be given the roots, find f of x. And then remember this linear factorization theorem that I talked about back here, this linear factorization theorem here. So what that says is that if you're given the roots, you've got the factors. And if you have the factors, you can find the polynomial. So we would just be going in reverse. And let's just look at what that looks like. If I were to, if I were to say uh, f of x is equal to x, and then I go minus a negative uh, one-fifth, which is x plus one-fifth. So we already did that, something like that before. And then look at these other roots. So it's going to be x minus, and then put parentheses, one plus rad 5i, and then times x minus 1 minus rad 5i. So do you see how that works? And then we would probably, yes, need to uh, multiply this out and uh, simplify it. And that would be a little bit, uh, take a few steps, but shouldn't be anything that's too difficult. And then Another thing to notice, one last thing to notice here, is that, look, if you, and I would rather have the, uh, the original uh, function, so I'm going to take this and replace it with the original function. Here's the original function. Given this function, if these coefficients are all real, and that's always going to be the case for us. I mean, our coefficients are probably all, always going to be all integers. And, but even if they're not integers, if they're real, so I could have a, a radical coefficient here. But if these are all real, then these roots here, these roots here, I will always have, if I have imaginary roots, I will have conjugate imaginary roots. So, for example, like the general case would be if I have a plus bi, then I would also have a minus bi. And that is called the conjugate, the conjugate root theorem. Which is, look, all you need to remember is that you can't have a single imaginary root in any of the polynomials that, that we're going to be examining. And that is it for this topic.